Welcome to Movie Rehash. Today, I'm going to explain sci-fi action movie released in 1984, title, The Terminator. Spoiler ahead. Watch out and take care. In the distant future of 2029, a desolate and war-torn Los Angeles is under the ruthless control of robotic war machines, ranging from tanks to hovercrafts. The title card informs us that humanity is locked in a prolonged and arduous conflict against these formidable adversaries known as the machines. However, a revelation awaits, the ultimate and decisive confrontation will not occur in this grim future, but instead, it will unfold in the past, specifically in the present time, tonight. In Los Angeles, on May 12, 1984, at 1.34 a.m., something strange happens. Lightning strikes a garbage truck near the Griffith Park Observatory, causing a power outage. The truck driver sees a very strong and naked man, standing up and walking toward the city. As the man walks, he encounters three young troublemakers. They make fun of him, asking sarcastic questions. The man doesn't seem to care and gives him different answers. However, he demands that they give him their clothes. The boys get aggressive and take out their knives. The man easily knocks two of them away, but the third punk manages to stab him. Surprisingly, the man doesn't seem hurt and, incredibly, uses his bare hands to tear open the punk's body, killing him. Now, the only boy left alive, gets scared and quickly starts taking off his coat. In a downtown alley, a homeless man notices a bright, round light hovering above the ground, similar to the one in Griffith Park. Suddenly, a scarred and naked man, smaller but still muscular, is forcefully pushed through the light and lands in the alley, clearly in pain. This man is Kyle Reese. Reese, in desperate need of clothing, takes the homeless man's pants just as a police car arrives with two cops ordering him to stop. Reese manages to hide and attacks one of the cops, taking the officer's gun. He urgently asks the cop about the date and year, confusing the officer with his question. When the other cop shows up, Reese dashes into a department store, where he steals several items, including Nike sneakers and a long coat. He escapes from the store and in another alley, he takes a shotgun from an empty police car. Then, he finds a nearby phone book and looks up the name Sarah Connor. Elsewhere a young woman, Sarah Connor, lives the life of a lonely waitress. Sharing an apartment with her friend Ginger, Sarah is living out a boring life that seems to go nowhere. The muscular man steals a car and drives to a local sporting goods store. There, he asks the owner for a phased plasma rifle, but the owner tells him they only have the weapons on display. The man loads a shotgun, shoots the clerk, and takes some rifles from the store. He then looks up Sarah Connor in the phone book and finds three listings in Los Angeles. He goes to the address of the first Sarah Connor and encounters a small barking dog. When Sarah opens the door and confirms her name, the man forces his way inside and shoots her with the pistol he obtained. Later, at the diner where Sarah works, her co-worker rushes her to the television where they see a news report about another woman with the same name being murdered by an unknown attacker. One evening, Sarah and her roommate, Ginger, are getting ready for their separate dates. Ginger's boyfriend, Matt, is coming over to spend the night. However, Sarah's date cancels on her. Feeling disappointed, Sarah decides to go out and have some pizza instead. While she's out, Sarah watches a news report that talks about another woman with the same name who was found dead. This news makes her feel uneasy. To make matters worse, she notices someone following her. Worried for her safety, she quickly seeks refuge in a small dance club called Tech Noir. Sarah tries to call Ginger for comfort, but she does not respond or call. Meanwhile, the killer, who is targeting women named, Sarah Connor, arrives at the apartment and tragically shoots Ginger and Matt after hearing Sarah's voice on their answering machine revealing her location. Frightened and desperate for help, Sarah calls the police and speaks with Lt. Ed Traxler and Sgt. Vukovic, who are investigating the Sarah Connor killings. They advise her to stay put at the club until they can send a squad car to pick her up. As Sarah waits in the club, the killer arrives and takes out the bouncer before making his way into the crowd, putting Sarah's life in imminent danger. At that moment, Reese has also came to the club. The killer spots Sarah and points its laser-sighted pistol at her. Reese acts quickly and shoots the killer several times, causing it to fall to the floor. But to Sarah's shock, the killer somehow gets back up and starts shooting at Reese with the Uzi it stole. As the killer moves closer to Sarah, it shoots the woman standing behind her, and her body falls on top of Sarah, pinning her to the floor. The situation becomes even direr. However, Reese reappears just in time and fires several shotgun blasts at the killer, sending it crashing through the club's front window and landing on the street below. Seeing an opportunity to escape, Reese urges Sarah to follow him if she wants to stay alive. The killer, undeterred by the fall, rises again and chases after them as they rush out the back of the club. The danger is far from over, and they must find a way to survive. Reese and Sarah race through an alley behind the club as the relentless killer keeps pursuing them. We get a glimpse from the killer's perspective, revealing that he is a robot with enhanced night vision. Reese tries to slow the killer down by shooting the gas tank of a nearby car, causing it to explode. However, the killer remains unharmed and leaps onto the hood of Reese's car. The killer smashes its fist through the windshield, reaching for Sarah. In a quick thinking move, Reese skillfully maneuvers the car in reverse, throwing the killer off the vehicle. They manage to escape momentarily, but the killer is not giving up. 
Reese speeds away in his car, but the Terminator quickly finds an opportunity to subdue a nearby police officer and takes his squad car. During the pursuit, the killer listens carefully to the police reports on the squad car's radio and mimics the cop's voice to respond, making it even more difficult for Reese and Sarah to shake him off their trail. During the intense chase, Reese urgently identifies himself as a sergeant with a unique serial number. He explains to Sarah that she has been marked for termination, and the relentless killer pursuing them is not a human but a machine known as a Terminator. This Terminator is a deadly metallic combat chassis disguised with living human tissue to make it look like an ordinary person. They continue racing through various alleys until they finally find a momentary refuge in a parking garage. Reese informs Sarah that the older 600 series Terminators had rubber skin, which made them somewhat easier to spot. However, the newer 800 series Terminators are incredibly hard to distinguish from real humans, which is why he had to follow Sarah and wait for the Terminator to reveal itself. Finding it hard to believe and overwhelmed with fear, Sarah starts to scream for help and even bites Reese on the hand in panic. He sternly tells her not to do it again. In the parking garage, they abandon Reese's car and discover another unlocked vehicle. Reese goes on to explain that a powerful new computer system, known as Skynet in the first sequel, will initiate a nuclear war and control all defense systems. Although Reese hasn't personally witnessed the nuclear holocaust, he grew up in poverty and starvation in the ruined world that followed. He was enslaved, marked with a barcode, and forced to work disposing of bodies in incinerators. Reese reveals that the human race will face near extinction, but hope arises when a man named John Connor emerges as a leader. John successfully unites the remaining humans into an effective resistance movement against Skynet. By the time Reese is sent back to the present day by John himself, Skynet has already been defeated by the resilient human resistance. Notably, John Connor is Sarah's future son. Out of desperation, Skynet has sent the Terminator to the present day to kill Sarah and erase John Connor from existence. Reese also tells her that this Terminator is a newer model, looking incredibly human compared to the older ones. He warns Sarah that the android can bleed, sweat, and even has bad breath to blend in better. Reese is unsure if he can beat this advanced Terminator without the future's powerful weapons. The Terminator locates them in that place, and the pursuit continues. Reese asks Sarah to drive, and he manages to shoot the Terminator a few times with his shotgun. Sarah stops the car, causing the Terminator to crash into a wall. The police approach, and Reese prepares to shoot at them, but Sarah intervenes, fearing they will harm him. However, both Sarah and Reese end up getting arrested. To her dismay, Sarah notices that the Terminator has managed to escape from the scene. At the police station, Traxler informs Sarah that Ginger has been killed, and Reese has been taken to a criminal psychiatrist named, Dr. Peter Silberman. Unfortunately, Silberman considers Reese's tale about the Terminator as a severe delusion. While watching the recorded interview, Silberman becomes excited, thinking that handling a case like Reese's could boost his career. The Terminator retreats to a rundown hotel room to lay low. There, it takes out the damaged human-like eye, revealing a high-tech, glowing red robotic eye underneath. Afterward, it puts on sunglasses, changes its appearance by swapping clothes, and sets out to continue its pursuit of Sarah. At the police precinct, the Terminator arrives just as Drive, Silberman is leaving and demands to see Sarah. However, the desk sergeant refuses to let the intimidating figure in. Unfazed, the Terminator gives a menacing look to the desk sergeant and cryptically states, I'll be back. About a minute later, chaos erupts as the Terminator crashes a stolen car through the front door of the precinct. With ruthless efficiency, it shoots down every officer in its path. Inside, the Terminator locates a circuit panel, rips out a main cable, and thrusts the live wire into the fuse box, causing an electrical surge that plunges the building into darkness, leaving the policemen at a disadvantage. Amid the ensuing battle, Traxler and Vukovic are hit by gunfire. However, Reese manages to break free from confinement, steal another car, and take refuge in a sewer tunnel. The next day, the two of them arrive at a roadside motel. Reese heads off to buy the necessary chemicals for making explosives. While he's out, Sarah takes a shower and calls her mother, providing her current location's phone number. Little does she know that the Terminator is secretly listening on the other end and skillfully mimicking Sarah's mother's voice. Soon after, the Terminator calls the motel using its actual voice, pretending to be someone else, and asks the desk clerk for the motel's address, intending to track down Sarah. Reese returns in motel, and the both spend a romantic day making homemade explosives. Reese confesses his love for Sarah and the both end up having a good time in bed. In the evening, the Terminator finds them at the motel, so they escape in a stolen pickup truck. While driving on a wide highway, Reese tries hard to use pipe bombs they made to stop the Terminator, but he gets shot. Sarah successfully knocks the Terminator off its motorcycle, but their truck overturns. After recovering, the Terminator is hit by a semi-tanker truck and dragged briefly. When the driver halts, the Terminator kills him, and then seizes the truck, instructing the driver's partner to exit. It tries to chase down Sarah, but she manages to rescue Reese from their wrecked pickup just before the Terminator runs it over. Near a factory, Reese uses another pipe bomb on the truck's tank, causing an explosion. As Reese and Sarah embrace, the Terminator emerges from the wreckage. They retreat into the automated factory, where Reese activates multiple machines to hinder the Terminator. Eventually cornered, Reese places his last bomb in the Terminator's endoskeleton, causing an explosion that scatters android pieces. 
Sarah, nursing a severely injured leg, finds Reese, but he's dead. She is suddenly attacked by the top half of the Terminator skeleton. Desperately crawling away, she lures the Terminator into a giant hydraulic press. Trapping it there, she pushes the button to activate the press. The Terminator is crushed until its red glowing eye fades. Sarah is taken to an ambulance and witnesses the paramedics placing Reese in a body bag. Later, she drives a jeep in the desert with a large dog beside her, heading seemingly towards Mexico and stopping at a gas station. Sarah is noticeably more pregnant with John Connor and records her voice on cassette tapes for her son. One question she ponders is whether to reveal to John that Reese is his father and how it might impact his decision to send the warrior back in time to save her. As the jeep is refueled, a young boy takes her picture with a Polaroid camera, the same picture John will give Reese in the future. They haggle over the price, and she purchases it. The boy says something in Spanish, and the gas station owner tells her he said a storm is coming, but she is already aware. Sarah sees the approaching storm and drives off into an unknown future. In this way, movie ends here.